What's up, everyone? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com, your home for the 2020 World Series champion, Los Angeles Dodgers. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by Justin Lorber. We are here to talk about minor league player and pitcher of the year. The Dodgers made their announcements yesterday. Uh, Miguel Vargas is the minor league player of the year. Hyun Il Choi, the minor league pitcher of the year. Before we get into these two, Justin, I'll start with the big question. Were these the right two guys for these awards? I think on the position player side, definitely. Uh, Miguel Vargas had a fantastic year, um, hit as well as he always has, and added power. Um, did it at high A, did it at double A, uh, both spots. He was well younger than the lead average age. Uh, Hyun Choi, I think there are. I think there are some other pitchers who had equally good cases, but uh, he's definitely not a bad choice. I don't think you can. I don't think you could argue super hard against him. Fair, fair. Well, let's start with Vargas. Uh, 21 years old, as you said, kind of bounced between high A and double A. His slash line, 319 batting average, 380 on base, 526 slug. He had 23 home runs. Um, for a 21-year-old, as you said, you know, he's a big kid. He's he's more of a top prospect than Choi is. But um, what was it about Vargas's season? I mean, you mentioned adding some more power to a hit tool that was already there. Was there like an improvement on Vargas's end that was dramatic as far as changing the perception of him in your mind? Yeah, definitely. Uh, he's always been a guy who's hit really well. Uh, but when you're a corner infielder, uh, you kind of have to hit for power at least to, you know, get to that top prospect status. And he hadn't reached there yet, you know, albeit he was pretty young playing, uh, you know, he reached high A as a 19-year-old in 2019. But this year, you know, showing the power, driving the ball with authority uh, at both levels, yeah. uh, really, really impressive. Did everything you could have hoped for this year uh, in terms of improving his outlook. And he should start next season at AAA as a 22-year-old. Yeah, I mean, you look at uh, looking at his splits between high A and AA, he actually hit better at AA. He hit seven points higher. His on-base percentage was 20 points higher. And then he played in about twice as many games and hit 16 home runs at AA compared to seven at single A. Um, the other guy here is Choi, who is probably a lesser known player in Dodger prospect circles. As I said, Vargas is top five ish, top 10 ish, depending on which list you look at in the Dodger system. Choi, a little bit more of a, a mystery. Another 21 year old right hander um, played last year at the Arizona League this year. Full first full minor league season, um, eight and six on the season, three point five five ERA, a whip under one, uh, basically striking out one guy per batter between low A and high A. Um, where, what did you see from Choi that you liked? Obviously, the strikeout rate is solid. The whip below one is great, but um, what is it that makes him successful as a pitcher? So uh, just some background on Choi, because I actually got a question on Twitter uh, similar, because I think a lot of fans uh, who aren't as into the prospect stuff weren't aware of him uh, petting to this year, still might not be super aware of him. Uh, he was signed out of South Korea uh, a couple years ago. Uh, he was rumored to be a possible number one overall pick for the KBO, a very high draft pick. Uh, decided to sign with the Dodgers at a high school, which is not generally something you see a whole lot of uh, with the Asian countries. Um, obviously, in Latin America, uh, the kids are signing super young there. Or they sign at 16, and a lot of times they agree to deals well before that. Uh, but that's not been a very common practice in Asia. Uh, but uh, good on the Dodgers for getting Choi. In when he was in Low A, uh, he had one of the highest strikeout to walk ratios in the entire minor leagues uh, across all starters, and he led um, minor league pitchers 21 or younger in strikeout to walk ratio. So he is kind of a control artist, and those guys can get less notoriety, I think, at every level because the guys with the great pure stuff are more exciting. They get more. Twitter views, they got a pitching ninja, whatever it is. Um, so I think at every level, but especially at the younger levels uh, and the lower levels, it's tough for the guys who are more polished over stuff to get notoriety. But what he did this year at low A and then struggled a little bit uh, when he got moved up to high A, still respectable, uh, but he wasn't the same kind of guy that he was at low A, just to give you a picture. At low A, 10.3 strikeouts per nine, 0.96 watts per Jeez. nine and that the strikeouts went down to 6.8 the watts went up to 2.4 at high a uh, he's still young uh he's still 21 years old he just turned 21 a few months ago uh, so this is who if there is a jump in stuff you know whether that's added fastball velocity or one of the breaking balls becomes a lot better his best pitch right now it's a splitter 
uh, kind of like a split change similar to Tony Gosselin. So if one of those two things jumps up, uh, this is someone who could really rise up prospect rankings. Yeah, and looking at your rankings, you've got Vargas 6th in your middle of 2021 rankings. It looks like you have Choi 17th. Um, Choi, as you said, he gets bumped up a level and struggles. His ERA imp- it goes up by a, about a run, um, which is fascinating just compared to Vargas, who actually got better when he moved up a level from, from low A to double A. Um, are either, or do you still feel like now kind of at the end of the season – Vargas at six, Choi at 17. Does that feel about right? Did either of those guys improve in the second half of the season in your mind? I think Vargas probably goes up uh, in my pre-2022 rankings uh, that I put a little bit of thought into, but not a whole lot. Uh, He he probably moves up just because he he was their best hitter at double A. And that double A lineup had a lot of good bats. Um, Ryan Noda had 30 home runs. Uh, Michael Bush had a great year. So there were a lot of guys in that lineup who did well. And he was, I think, pretty clearly the best hitter in that lineup as a 21-year-old. Yeah. Choi, uh, like you said, struggled a little bit. Not like anything too concerning. I think the most concerning thing uh, with him moving up a level is the walks went up uh, a good amount. And the strikeouts went way down. Yeah. Um, so the stuff was not playing as well against more advanced hitters. And he's not he's not a pure stuff guy. He's not like Bobby Miller or right. you know maybe a Clayton Beater where he's just gonna blow guys away with stuff. Uh, so it's a little concerning, but I still think he's easily a top twenty five uh, prospect in the system. You know, I, I don't think I would put him any lower than that, even if that. Yeah, I, you mentioned the Gonsolin comp, and it's an interesting one just as I hear his profile because Gonsolin. I mean, obviously Gonsolin's fastball can play up a little bit more but he's more of a pitchability type stuff, off-speed type stuff, not really a breaking ball. Um, I, I know you weren't comparing Choi to Gonsolin, but is that kind of like a best-case scenario for a guy like Choi? Uh, you know, the fastballs are a little different. Gonsolin's fastball is a little more metrically sound, um, get more whiffs in the zone. Okay. Uh, his breaking balls are also better, obviously. He's five years old, <laughs> actually like six years older. Um, he, he's, he's a lot older. Uh, he's more advanced. Yeah. Uh, Tony Gonsolin was drafted as a senior out of college in the ninth Fair. round. Uh, Piano Choi is 21 now. Yeah. So he, he will be the age that Gonsolin was drafted next year. Fair. Uh, to use some perspective. Uh, I think the common thing there is like the split change uh, for both of them. That's their money pitch. Uh, yeah. Gonsolin's is better, but he's a major league pitcher, so <laughs> it should be better. Yeah. Last question here. I mean, other guys that maybe in your estimation, probably deserve some honorable mention for these awards. As we said beforehand, before jumping on, this is not a who's the best prospect in the system award. You have Bobby Miller as your number one prospect. You have Michael Bush as your number one offensive prospect. But this is an award to reward the guys who had fantastic seasons, regardless of age, regardless of level, et cetera. So are there other guys that in your estimation should at least be mentioned, even if maybe, hey, they didn't deserve to beat these guys, but we'll give them a shout out anyways. Yeah, uh, if someone comes close to Vargas, I think it's probably Andy Pajes, uh, who was in the same lineup as Vargas for the first part of 2021 in high A. Uh, 31 home runs as a 20-year-old, high walk rate, uh, good defense in the outfield, uh, really a really strong arm in right field. He threw a ton of guys out this year. Uh, so if someone's going to come close to Vargas, it's probably Pajes, but I still think Vargas would get the nod with the slightly better season. Okay. Uh, at least in terms of performance pitchers like i said at the top of this video uh I, I think that there are a number of guys you could take bobby miller even though he missed some time gavin stone uh who like Choi, spent some time at low a spent some time at the end of the year at high a uh, so there's a couple of guys who i think should get that award and you wouldn't really look at it any differently uh but Choi is certainly deserving Got it. Got it. Awesome. Well, Justin, as always, we appreciate your time. Justin's going to be joining me on Monday. We're going to do a sort of whatever playoff preview of some sort. Hopefully, hopefully we're talking about a game that night, which is game 163 between the Dodgers and Giants. Um, I don't know how optimistic either of us are about that, but hey, we will be here on Monday. So I'll be here with Matt and Daniel live on Sunday night at eight o'clock. And then Justin and I will be recording um, on Monday afternoon as well. So stay tuned for that. Check out Justin's work at Future Dodgers on Twitter. My name is Jeff Spiegel. Check out DodgerBlue.com. DodgerBlue 1958 for all the latest. Justin, we appreciate your time and we'll talk to you soon. The best team holding a trophy high in the air. The Los Angeles Dodgers. 
champions of the baseball world.